Hello and welcome to my workshop. So we got the main structure, uh, body and everything done for the Jeep Willys. Now we're going to move on to the uh, final details and the paint. Alright, so let's get started. I'm picking up this build where I left off with the seats. I have two thicknesses of foam for the seat. A little thicker for the bottom than the back. I am wrapping the foam with a fabric material that is close to a canvas in scale. To attach the material to the foam, I use spray glue. You just need to spray it on both sides and wait for it to tack up a bit. Once the two sides touch, it's stuck in place. I went with a simple wrap to get the material around the edge. Just make small cuts where the material makes a turn. If you pull it hard enough, it'll move into place. The seat back, which was exposed, didn't look very good with all the material cuts. To make this look a little better, I glued black fabric on the back after cutting it to shape. I'm not quite sure if the cut section on the body is a foothold, but it makes sense to me. I noticed that for some, they seem to be backed, while some just go straight through. This detail is pretty easy to make. After marking out, a drill is used to make a rounded part on each end. Then the material is cut out to connect the two holes. This process is repeated on the other side to finish it up. Under the front and rear fender, there is a structure. I couldn't quite tell what its purpose was, but I wanted to replicate it as best as possible. I went with some simple styrene shapes that were glued in place, where I noticed a structure. It's not much, but it does add some needed detail. The next detail is on the rear of the Jeep. It's a plate with a tube attached. My assumption is this is something to do with the top. To make this piece, a thin sheet of styrene was cut and bent around the rear. Once glued in place, a tube is affixed in the center. I use CA glue to hold it in place, as well as act as a filler. The real piece was rounded up to the tube, and the CA glue, along with some filler, will give that look.
The majority of the windshield is made from metal, but I decided to frame in the window with styrene. I can get much thinner pieces glued in place and it looks more realistic. I cut down and glued into place a frame. As soon as I finished mounting it to the Jeep, I realized it was wrong. When I added the center bar, I didn't take into account the thickness of the frame. Once in place, the window opening was way too small. To fix this, I had to cut out the frame and move the bar down. To prep all the small pieces for paint, holes were poked into cardboard. Doing this keeps the parts from flying all over the place when hit with paint from a spray can. The inspiration picture I was sent had the windshield in a red oxide primer with a few splashes of gray primer. So after a quick coat of primer, the windshield was complete. I'm still not quite sure what these pieces on the side are for. I believe they are for holding tools, but could not find a good picture. If you know, leave a comment below. I know the earlier models had some tools below the door, but these later models had that part removed. You can tell this by the divot in the body near the door. Regardless of what they are for, thin pieces of styrene were used to create the shapes before they would Regardless of what they're for, thin pieces of styrene were used to create the shapes before they were glued into place. Another detail that I really like were the pockets on each side, right above the fenders. I also think these are for the roof, but I'm, I'm not sure about that either. These were simple enough to make by gluing a flat piece to an angle piece to make the square pocket. The flat piece was left a little long on one side, and it really does look the part. I was able to reuse the Cricut file from a previous project to cut out the Willys logo from a styrene sheet. My Cricut will cut 15 thousandths no problem and will do a really good job of scoring 20 thousandths. With the 20 thousandths all you need to do is finish the cut with a sharp razor blade. Even though I'm going to weather this Jeep, I wanted to start out with a good paint job. 
The body was fully primed and wet sanded down to a 600 grit. To match the inspiration, a yellow paint from Duplicolor was sprayed on. I really like this paint because it goes on thin and dries very quickly. It's a bit expensive, but not quite as bad as Tamiat though. After the paint is dry, the weathering process begins. My first step was to wet sand back the yellow with some 400 and 600 grit paper. Some areas I went very light and some areas were taken all the way down to the primer. I try to avoid going back to the raw plastic, but sometimes it happens. The reason for the sanding is to give a sun faded look to the paint. Some areas will still look yellow, but at just the right angle, you can see through to the primer. I knew I wanted heavy areas of rust in certain spots. To start this process, a ball end bit was used on my rotary tool. I stabbed at the plastic to make divots and pop marks like you might see in heavily rusted uh, damaged pieces of metal. I did my best to replicate where panels were rusted by looking at real rusty Jeeps online. At this point I realized the bottom was not yet painted. I decided on flat black. I also decided that a little overspray would work in my favor. The next step might seem quite odd. Yes, that is yellow mustard. What I am doing is painting the heavy rusted spots with mustard. This is placed on top of the rust paint after I sprayed on a clear coat. The clear coat will prevent any of the rust effect from being removed. The reason for the mustard is to act as a barrier when I spray another layer of yellow paint over the body. After the yellow paint has dried, sponges and sandpaper were used to remove the mustard to reveal rust below. Since I am not perfect with the mustard painting, some yellow paint is left over the rough rust texture. This gives it a look of rust forming below the paint. The next step is to add more layers with a rust effect paint. This paint is gray, but has a metal suspended in the paint. After it dries, a solution is applied to accelerate the rusting of the paint. What you end up with is actual rust layered over the rust paints and washes. The layer effect really helps to sell it as real.
The windshield is just held in place with small M2 hardware on each side. As with the real one, a gasket material is needed to seal the windshield to the cowl. I make this gasket by cutting a piece of foam down to the general shape. I then use a sanding drum on my rotary tool to fine tune the fitment. With all the major rust complete, I move on to adding in the detail to the dash. The pre-painted pieces are glued into place and last minute painting is completed. Since I sprayed a glossy yellow last, the body had too much of a sheen. I also wanted to make the body look like it had years of grime and dirt ground into the paint. This is accomplished by applying weathering oils. For this body, I chose a cream and a blue color. Small dots of this oil-based paint were added as randomly as possible. I then used a brush dipped in solvent to spread out the oils. Most of the solvent was washed away so it's almost like a dry brush technique. The end result, if done correctly, is a dullness to the paint that has multiple colors blended together. If it's done right, all you notice is the dullness, not the oil paint. With the patina finished, the last detail is to mount the seats in place. These are all just held down with empty hardware and nuts on the bottom of the body. A few more details are glued into place and the interior is complete. The taillights are set up to hold 3mm LEDs. The lens is 3D printed and painted with a red clear paint from Tamiya. These are glued into place with a small dab of E6000. Where possible, I like to paint chrome pieces off the car with my airbrush. Since I had to glue the headlight reins in place ahead of time, I set it on brushing it on. The end result is fine, but you do get more even finish with the airbrush. Once dry, the lenses were installed and small aluminum funnels were placed behind each headlight. With the five millimeter hole drilled in the funnel, it makes for a perfect reflector. I almost forgot the windshield stops at the end of the hood. 
I believe these are solid rubber originally, but so many Jeeps have these made from wood. My guess is nobody makes these stops any longer, and using wood is just much simpler for most people. This Willys Jeep was a lot of fun to build and paint. I was able to use and develop some neat techniques. There are quite a few fun projects coming up. Until then, I'll see you on the rocks.